As you'll see at the front, we have a bit of a display going on there. That is all for the Bogner Food Bank. Um, you might be aware that actually the food bank is, is really struggling at the moment in, t in a number of ways. That is because of the cost of living crisis, which means that there is a higher demand than possibly ever before in, in the existence of the food bank. Apparently, uh, the, the need has gone up by 70% compared to last year. Uh, we sometimes we have this idea that God doesn't actually want us to have fun. The church doesn't want us to have fun. But actually, this is what Jesus is saying here. He's saying that actually we want to, he wants everyone to experience life in all its fullness, to live a rich life. Do we, do we have a, a frame that is about scarcity, that God's love is scarce, that there isn't enough of the pie to go around, so I've got to kind of fight and throw my elbows to get my piece of the pie? Or do we have a vision, a picture of God that is rooted in his abundance and his generous and his overflowing love like we've just seen? Good morning, folks. Wow, what a busy morning. Juliet's just walked in. That's awesome. Because we were just talking about you in a nice way. Juliet knows the actions to the song. That's the explanation. Okay. Welcome. Welcome to the Shore Community Church. I'm Jamie. I'm one of the ministers here. Nick, the other one over there, has just spilled his water on the floor. Honestly. You can't take him anywhere, really. Look, look at this. He's got, he's, got, he's got big feet for a short fellow, hasn't he? Anyway, moving on. Welcome, this is our harvest service. This is our family service. So the kids and the youth are gonna stay in. It's gonna be a shorter service than normal. Um, and we're gonna have communion later, as you can see. And afterwards, there's also, I hope you're very excited, there's our, um, our harvest fair out the back there, which is the culmination of our talents fundraiser that's been going over the whole of the summer. And um, hopefully we'll have some stories over the next couple of weeks as we collect all that in and, uh, and can share all the different wonderful uh, and wacky ways that folks have been raising money. Um, some of you might have already been getting in some early purchases. It's meant to be for afterwards, I just want to say. So, you know, if you're hiding a, a pot of jam or something at the moment, then... That's all right. Okay, if you are comfortable and able to stand with me, then please stand. If you'd rather sit, that's absolutely fine. We're going to worship. We're going to sing together a little bit. There's some actions to this one. So if Izzy wants to come up and show us the actions to... Uh, Lion and the Lamb. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyone who wants to do some actions to Lion and the Lamb. And Juliet look keen as well. So come on, Juliet, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Lion and the Lamb. Coming on the clouds, kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break, as broken hearts declare his praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring in power and fighting our battles and every knee will bow before him our god is the lamb the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world his blood breaks the chains and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb every knee will bow before him So open up the gates, so open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. The God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring in power. And fighting our battles, and every knee will bow before Him. Our God is a Lamb, the Lamb that was slain.
for the sins of the world His blood breaks the chains And every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb Every knee will bow before Him Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Who can stop? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. of heights to the depths of the sea creations revealing your majesty from the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring every creature unique in the song that it sings all exclaiming indescribable uncontainable you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name you are amazing god all powerful untamable awestruck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim you are amazing told every lightning bolt where it should go or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow who imagined the sun and gives source to its light yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night None can fathom Indescribable Uncontainable You place the stars in the sky And you know them by name You are amazing God All powerful Untamable Awestruck we fall to our knees As we humbly proclaim You are amazing God, you are amazing. You are amazing, God. Indescribable, uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. Amazing God, all powerful, untamable, awestruck, we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim, You are amazing God, indescribable, 
uncontainable You place the stars in the sky And you know them by name You are amazing God All powerful, untamable Awestruck we fall to our knees As we humbly proclaim you are amazing God. Amen. You are a wonderful God. You are untainable. You are indescribable. And Lord, we gather here this morning to worship your holy name. Lord, I thank you that we can gather here on what is quite a miserable day weather-wise, but actually we can celebrate the wonder, the beauty, uh, the majesty of who you are and who you mean to us. So Lord, on this Harvest Family Service, may you meet with each of us, no matter our age, no matter our stage, no matter what we might be bringing with us this morning, maybe some burdens, maybe some difficulties from the week gone by, maybe joy in our hearts. Lord, wherever we're at, we know that you will meet us exactly in that place. So Lord, I just pray into all of the elements of this service. May we experience you and may we come away from this time feeling renewed, feeling restored, feeling ready to share about what you mean to us. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Shore Community Church. I'm Nick. Uh, I'm the other minister here. It's great to have you guys here and you guys online as well. So a few things to share about with you. As Jamie introduced the service, this is a family service and it is all centred around harvest. Uh, as you'll see at the front, we have a bit of a display going on there. That is all for the Bogner Food Bank. Um, you might be aware that actually the food bank is, is really struggling at the moment in, t in a number of ways. That is because of the cost of living crisis, which means that there is a higher demand than possibly ever before in, in the existence of the food bank. Apparently, uh, the, the need has gone up by 70% compared to last year in, in terms of the, the need for food parcels. But then also the donations are really tailing off. As you can imagine, people going shopping, they're a bit more aware of what they're spending, so less is going into the baskets um, at different supermarkets as well. Um, so they're really in need of support to be able to support those who are really in need in this town. Um, so it's wonderful that we've got a great array of food there. Um, if you brought any more up um, at, that you haven't put on the display yet, maybe in the next worship song, please feel welcome to come and do that. Uh, we're going to have lots of different elements going on in this service. One of those is that there is colouring at the front for any of the younger kids if they'd like to join in with that, or any adults that get a bit bored as, as we go along with the service. Um, but please do, um, yeah, the kids are really welcome to join in with that. Um, so a couple more notices. So you will no be aware that there are lots of things going on out there. Um, that is because it is the culmination of the talents Fundraiser. So we're having a harvest fair this morning after the service um, and the, a lot of the things that are there are where people have been given uh, seed money and then they have used that to multiply um, and to use their gifts to be able to, to sell things and the money is going towards the work of the Haven. So the Haven is the wellbeing initiative that is taking place uh, at the shore and it is just really focused on supporting people in their emotional, mental, uh, physical, spiritual wellbeing. And it's been going brilliantly, um, but it does need further funds to help support the ongoing work that's going there. So uh, yeah, there's been the uh, Talents Fundraiser. How many people have been involved in that in some way, shape or form, whether they've uh, been selling stuff or, or doing something for it or buying things for it? Um, there's been a lot of involvement. It's been a really brilliant initiative uh, led by Chris. And Chris and John are going to be out in the, uh, in the 
I was about to say lounge, but it's the cafe area now. Uh, they're going to be out in the cafe area after the service. Uh, and if you've got any money from uh, your fundraising efforts, then please do go and give that to them. They'll also have uh, gift aid forms too, uh, which if you're able to complete that, if you're a taxpayer, then that really helps actually multiply uh, what we'll be giving to. So please do seek them out after the service. Also, a quick notice about church meeting. We have a church meeting taking place this coming week on Thursday, the 6th of October, 7.30 p.m. here in the church. So that's going to be a really important meeting um, where we're going to be sharing about the vision of the church going forward. We're going to be talking about what, what does it mean for us to be church, a bit about uh, the series that Jamie uh, recently started um, and what does that mean for us as a church community going forward. So please do come along to that. Uh, we're also going to be voting in uh, new members as well. Um, so it will be a really, a really good meeting to have together. Uh, I'm just going to invite John to come up to share now uh, a little bit around Romania. Morning, everybody. Morning. How are you? Only thing I'm going to disagree with Nick is it's a lovely day. Although Chris has started calling me Elijah because every time I pick him up, it buckets with rain. So, uh, <laughs> but enough of that. Hey, yes, thank you, Nick. Um, I am standing here on behalf of the Ron Hellier Foundation. Uh, we are a small charity that works with uh, rural churches in Romania, and we like to try and help those folks out there wherever we can. Over the last couple of years, it's been a pandemic, and we haven't really managed to get out there and do the sort of work that we've been doing for many years. But uh, Joan Hellier and I did get out in July and spent some time there. And boy, have we got lots of news to share with you. So a note for your calendar. If you are around on Saturday the 15th of October, we have uh, an evening just to give some feedback about um, Romania, what we've seen out there, how we would like to serve our brothers and sisters over there in the coming months. Uh, there will be food, um, so do come along. Um, and more details on a notice I've put up at the back or hopefully in this week's news sheet. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Thank you very much, John. Uh, we are going to be taking up our offering now. Um, so if a few people would be able to help out with that, that would be brilliant. The offering is a, a really important part of our worship. It is another expression of worship in the church, and it is about giving to the church and helping continue the work of that. So if you're visiting, please don't worry about passing the baskets by. Um, but if we're regulars here, we give what we can to help continue the work of it. Thank you. Uh, and just while we're finishing with the offering, I'm just going to invite Simon to come up to just do the most important announcement of all. <laughs> uh, yes, we, um, as part of this um, uh, uh, talents initiative, um, we're running a karaoke night, curry okey and uh, as such, we're running on Indian time, so we'll be having the event after the deadline for the... Uh, for <laughs> for the harvest of, of talents. Uh, so please put in your diaries uh, the Saturday the 19th of November uh, here at the church. And uh, it's an evening of um, a wide variety of different homemade curries uh, and uh, the opportunity to shine uh, in, um, in, in whatever method of singing you, you would like as part of the karaoke night. So we are looking for, obviously we're looking for people to be here to enjoy the night and make it a blast. Uh, we're looking for some volunteers to help with the serving and the um, operating of the dishwasher. Um, we're looking for um, volunteers to help with the sort of stewarding of the tickets beforehand. Uh, and um, we are also inviting you to um, request uh, you know, that song that you know, you know, that song that you know you shine at, 
that, that esoteric song. I mean, I've heard that, you know, Chris, for example, is a whiz with the Bee Gees songs. And, um, you know, so, so um, yeah. The 19th of November, and we'll be uh, out. Dave, uh, Lacey and I will be um, at the back where the, where the sofas are later on taking um, initial bookings and, uh, and requests. Tickets themselves will be available next week, but you can come and pre-order yours today. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Simon. Uh, unfortunately, I'm scheduled to have a sore throat on that date, but um, <laughs> I'll enjoy the curry. <laughs> that might help you, though, mate. That might be a <laughs> advantage. Hey, who remembers our holiday club this year? It was amazing, wasn't it? And we had a completely brilliant, and I say that, you know, without any kind of agenda, the guy wrote it, um, a completely brilliant theme song with completely brilliant actions, which are completely on point for uh, our message today. So I'm going to once again invite the lovely Juliet and Izzy up, and I think helps us with the lovely Ama Aman Amanda as well. And is there any more? Come on. Let's give them some encouragement. Oh, and Ruth as well. Fantastic. Thanks, Ruth. They truly are the Spice Girls of action songs, aren't they? <laughs> the Herb Girls, is that? Okay. Um, very, very well seasoned. That's, that's, that's going too far, isn't it? Anyway. <laughs> Your own cheering section, what fun. Okay, kids. Kids, youth, youngsters. We're going to need your help because these, these folks here, you know, need your energy, eh? You can't remember the actions. None of us can remember the actions, so this is going to be interesting. So we're going to work our way through it. Nick, can, can you, um, Paul, can you pop the, uh, the lectern one on? And Nick is going to take us through. So it goes like this. So it's taste and see that the Lord is good. Actually, you're going to need to stand up for this. If you, if you, unless you're, you'd rather sit, that's fine. But if you, if you need a bit of energy, we need to move your shoulders, stretch your arms. Come on, let's warm up. So once again, taste and see that the Lord is good. And we repeat that four times, taste and see that the Lord is good. Next, then the first verse, right. We want the fruit of the Spirit. You're peeling a banana. Make us the salt of the earth. Salt, sprinkle, earth, globe. There we are. We want the Spirit of the Spirit. Make, make, make salt of the earth and taste and see that the Lord is good. Next verse is brilliant. Give us the bread of heaven. What was that? Oh, it's soaring, like soaring... A loaf of bread, I remember. Bread of heaven. Make us fishers of people. Woo! And the woo is not optional. As you pirouette, there's a woo. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Is that it? Oh, no, we've got a bridge, haven't we? Right. God's love. How do we do? We did God's love. Love, that's it, yeah. Is sweeter than honey. How did we do that? Yeah, sweeter than honey. Like you're spreading it on toast. Oh, that makes me hungry. Okay. God's love is sweeter than honey. God's love is sweeter, sweeter. It could not be more simple. Nick is um, contractually um, forbidden from doing action songs, so he's going to look <laughs> after the... Because he just gets too into it. Ready? Taste and see that the Lord is good. Come and taste and see that the Lord is good. Come and taste and see that the Lord is good. That the Lord is good. doing very well, folks. Are we ready to take on the first verse? We want the fruit of the Spirit. Make us the salt of the earth. We want the fruit of the Spirit. Is the salt of the earth Come and taste and see That the Lord is good That the Lord is good Doing well, bread of heaven We want the bread of heaven Make us fishers of people That was pathetic <laughs> Hang on, we've lost connection as well Plug in, plug in we're going to try that again, and I want, the woo. I want to feel the woo. I want to be moved by the woo. Give us the, make, sorry, give us the bread of heaven. Make us fishes of people. Give us the bread of heaven. Make us fishes of people. Come and taste and see 
that the Lord is good. That the Lord is good. Your love is sweeter than honey. God's 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 love is sweeter, sweeter. Ready? This is when we whisper. Come on, taste and see that the Lord is good. Come on, taste and see that the Lord is good. Come on, taste and see that the Lord is good. That the Lord is good. Then we do it really loud. Come on, taste and see that the Lord is good. Come on, taste and see that the Lord is good. Come and taste and see that the Lord is good. Big round of applause for my brilliant action people. Brilliant. That was amazing some very impressive actions going on there um i wouldn't have been completely against doing the actions but i genuinely cannot multitask in the slightest so it was either one or the other and i'd still rather the other so uh yeah hmm. so we have the harvest service taking place this morning and the particular theme that we are focusing on is about generosity and sharing versus scarcity so scarcity being that fear that the, there isn't enough, there isn't enough for me, um, versus the generosity and sharing theme. So we've been talking about the parable of the talents. That's what this talents fundraiser has been centered around, this parable that Jesus shared, where it was about a master who entrusted uh, a really big sum of money to three of his servants, left this massive amount with them for them to look after and we might know this story but two of them took that money and they invested it used it wisely and then returned it to the master where it had actually multiplied and grown by them using that money and putting it in the right places uh, whereas there was one who says um, I know you are a mean man you're a mean master and actually I was too afraid of losing this money so I just buried it in the ground and then brought it back to you and it's the same amount as before and the master is absolutely devastated with this and it's kind of this theme of generosity versus scarcity that last person was just really scared about losing what money he had um, so we are going to be reflecting further on that theme with a couple of illustrations centered around some other really significant parts of the Bible because the Bible is full of this theme about generosity and sharing and also that in relation to scarcity as well. So I'm just going to invite, if some kids would like to come up, it does involve chocolates. So if anyone wants to come up, some volunteers, we need a good handful of volunteers to come up. So would any of you guys like to come up? Anyone at all? It would be great to have a few of you. <laughs> Jamie could be one of them. He's a kid at heart. A few, a few more people. Would any of you guys possibly like the chance of getting some chocolate? Yeah? I thought so. I thought so. So, I wonder if one of you could read, if we could just have the screen back up, please, Paul, uh, for the laptop. I wonder if one of you guys would be up for reading what it says on the screen. Is anyone up for doing that? I have come that many may live and have it to full. The full, that is brilliant. Thank you very much for that well done. Round of applause. <laughs> Yes, so Jesus shared this with his disciples. He said, I came that they may have life and have it to the full. In some other versions, it says, I came that you may have life and have it abundantly as well. So lots and lots and lots of it. Um, so God 
wants us to actually enjoy our lives, uh, to where life can feel complete, where life can feel worth living as well. Uh, we Sometimes we have this idea that God doesn't actually want us to have fun. The church doesn't want us to have fun. But actually, this is what Jesus is saying here. He's saying that actually we want to, he wants everyone to experience life in all its fullness, to live a rich life. Um, and for our lives to be better, not worse. So what are some of the things that we love in our lives? They could be big things, they could be small things. If people just want to shout them out, that would be great. Yeah, hope. Chocolate. Chocolate. Oh, that is a very good answer. What are some of the other things that we love? Flowers, Flowers, yeah. Hope again. You? That's really good. That's really good. Love ourselves, that is really important some other things yeah music Music. yeah brilliant family yeah what other things do we love yeah friends Oh, that's great. We, we, there's so many things in our lives that we love, and it was actually really helpful that Hope came up with the first answer of chocolate. Hope, I wonder if you would be up for coming up here, if that's okay, because what I'm going to show as an illustration is life to the full, life in abundance. So we're just going to do this. So Hope, if you could just hold out your hand. Brilliant. So what I'm going to do here is going to give hope, life to the full. So we're just going to just going to pop that in there. We're just going to make sure you don't drop any. Right. So hope currently has life to the full. You can't really fit much more in there. It is completely full. So if you could just keep hold of that for the moment, hope. So actually, in the Bible, when Jesus says have life and have it to the full or have it to abundance. In the original Greek, which is the original uh, language that that was written in, are you doing okay there? Yeah. Uh, The original, yeah, I bet you want them all, don't you? So the original language for the word full or abundance is this Greek word called perisos. Can we all say perisos? Great, you're experts in ancient Greek now. Uh, So perisos, if it's actually directly translated, it doesn't just mean full or even abundance, it means overflow. So actually, what Jesus is saying there is that I came that you may have life to the overflow. So what does that look like for hope if she has life to the overflow? I wonder. Too much chocolate. So if we start doing this... So hope is getting life to the overflow. Yeah? Yeah. But actually, hope's managed to get a little bit more on there because it wasn't quite full. But look at all of this. This has all just gone to waste, which is a bit strange that Jesus might be saying you can have life to the overflow, but actually you have more life than you actually need. Hope doesn't need all of this. Well, maybe you feel like you do, but (laughs) if you want to pop them back in there for the moment, you will get more in just a moment's time. So, oh, Hope, if you could just come back up here, that would be great. Thank you. It's not finished yet. Um, So, Hope had it to the overflow, but actually, why would Jesus be saying that actually all of this life would get wasted? Actually, I think it might be about something else. So if we could just quickly get all of these back in and anyone who wants to join in in the hope of potentially getting some chocolate, if you want to come up as well. And hope, if you could just stand up again and do the same as before. And then if you other guys could come and crouch around hope and hold out your hands as well, yeah? So if you, so hope, if you hold out your hands like that, and then if you guys want to come around, so you can come around this side as well. If you squeeze around, we can fit a few more in. Yeah, that's brilliant. And if you hold your hands below hopes, yeah? Catch my leftovers. Brilliant. Yeah, you're getting the idea. <laughs> okay, so, you ready? So this is hope getting life to the overflow. <laughs> Brilliant. So what, what, what happened there? 
what happened there? It was that actually what hope got, the life that filled up hope, it overflowed and it overflowed into the hands of the other kids as well. So you guys can actually, before you go and sit down, I wonder if you could take some more and take them round to everyone in the church. Should we do that? So if we want to, if you could all take a box and if you could take them round to people in the church, that would be great. Yeah, please do. Great. And we're going to go and give these round to people. Yeah? Can I take a box? Yeah, you can take a box. Oh, there you go. Give them round to everyone. That's great. So, when we really know Jesus and we, we seek to follow Jesus and we seek to welcome in the life that Jesus brings us. It doesn't, he doesn't just fill us to the full. What Jesus is saying there is that it overflows. And it doesn't just go to waste when it overflows. But actually what Jesus wants us to do is to share that with those around us. So hopefully that is what you're experiencing now. It's when we experience life in all its fullness, we actually want to share that with others. It can be quite easy for us to just try and keep that life to ourselves Um, But actually, Jesus wants us to share that, for us to be generous with those around us, because God loves every single one of us. So I hope you enjoy your chocolates. So, my little bit. Just a quick reminder what we were talking about last time. Frames. Like Nick was saying earlier, you know, especially it's, it seems weird at a time like now where there's so much talk in the media about, you know, things being difficult and cost of living crisis and um, worries about our mortgage or our pensions and that sort of thing. But I want to remind you what we were talking about last week. What frame are we going to picture life through? Do we, do we have a, a frame that is about scarcity, that God's love is scarce, that there isn't enough of the pie to go around, so I've got to kind of fight and throw my elbows to get my piece of the pie Or do we have a vision, a picture of God that is rooted in his abundance and his generous and his overflowing love like we've just seen? And I wonder if that kind of attitude in in sort of keeping with the theme that we've been exploring, we're starting to explore in this new series, I wonder if that attitude of scarcity, never give chocolates out, it's just chaos from there. I wonder if that attitude of scarcity can also be seen in how we view one another, how we see the church. So I've got another little illustration. Um, It's a family service, so I always bring a strong rope with me. That's just something I've learned over the years. I'm going to need some helpers. Uh, Any youth or young people who can just help me with this rope? Can you guys... Cheers, guys. There's too much hilarity over there. This is church. What are you talking about? Right, what we need to do, if you can... Oh, I've made a knot of it now. Let's try and make it a knot. Oops. There we are. So we're going to try and make it a big long line. Right. Oh, hello. See, I've made a mess of it now, haven't I? Oh, oh, sorry. I'm not done. Well done, boys. We might need a few more people, actually, but you guys, that's a good start. So, right, what we're going to do is, if you, can you make a loop with the rope? So one of you hold both ends, and two of you sort of get on, get on corners to try and make a loop. Thanks, yeah, we need another helper. If you could grab a bit of rope and we're going to try and spread it out in a big circle. All right? Uh, Woody, if you want to come come over here, let's let's go over here. Now, what I want you to do is is put this loop to encompass. If you join join the two ends together, that's it. Make a loop to encompass. Who should should we try and include in our circle? We've got a little circle here. This, This rope is like a boundary. Follow me, boys, follow me. We're going this way. Walk it this way. Walk this way. Um... Scott, if you go around the other side, you go around the other side. So, and if there's anyone you don't like the look of, just loop it around their head. No, no, that's <laughs> health and safety, sorry. Keep going, keep going, keep going, Scott. We're going to come this way. Now, this rope means we can have some people inside the rope. Yeah, so I'm going to keep Claire on the outside. But Elisa on the inside. Who are we going to, so we can include all this lot, can't we? Yeah, well done, thanks, sir. Fiddly, you can, you can be the flexible link. So, we, so you lot, hands up if you're inside the rope. You are inside the boundary. So this is one way you can make a group. You can, you can make a group by creating a boundary. That's what we've done here. 
You've just ducked inside. That's really good. That's cool. You can jump inside. Too. If you want to be inside the group, you've got to be under the, under the barrier, haven't you? Alan, you want to be inside the group, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, go on, then. You've got, you've got to get under the barrier. If you, if you want to be part of the group, you've got to get inside the boundary. This is what they call a boundaried group. So the boundary makes the group. Now, now, how have we made this group? Why have we chosen for the boundary? Because the boundary could have been... Sorry, Elisa. I just think you're a bit dodgy. So, and, and Claire... Claire's brilliant. So Claire's in. Claire's in. Elisa's out. I've just moved the boundary. Why have I done that? How have I done that? All sorts of... She's put her foot in. She's breaking the rules already. <laughs> There's always one, isn't there? So this is one way to make a group. We can create a boundary and we've got insiders and outsiders. You're either in or you're out. How do we make the, how do you make the, uh, the boundary? That could be all sorts of reasons. So if we're talking about church, it could be, well, you know, have you been baptised? Have you, have you said the prayer? Well, that's great. That's all brilliant stuff to do. But is that it? Is, is that what, what really makes the boundary? Why don't we move the boundary? Let's move the boundary. This looks a bit dodgy. So what we're going to do, if we lift up our rope and we're going to go and get some other people in, because keep going, mind your heads, mind your glasses. Or oh, I don't know, about this lot here. Oh, oh. No, I'm not so sure, actually. We're going to get... Let's have these good-looking people at the back here. How about that? How about that? We can, we can move the boundary. We can, we can move the, the terms. We can make a group like this. And we end up with insiders and outsiders. So you lot, you, were in, you, you used to be insiders, now you're outsiders. How do you feel? Neglected. You feel neglected? Of course you do. So you know where I'm going with this. I bet you know where I'm going with this. How do we... Is this a good way to make... I mean, it's a perfectly acceptable way to make a group. You make a boundary, you make a rule, and you say there are some people in and there are some people who are out. How do we feel being on the outside? It's not... <laughs> It's not fair. Richard's in tears, bless him. <laughs> How do we feel being on the inside? Now, when we're thinking about church, you see, if we make a nice simple rule, and we can define the rule different ways, but if we make a nice simple rule on your inside, you can actually start to feel a little bit complacent, can't you? You think, I'm, a, I'm an insider, I'm feeling pretty good. Now, maybe, why are you an insider? Maybe it was where you were born, maybe it was how you were brought up, maybe it was all sorts of reasons, but your inside, and actually it doesn't really challenge you to move forward, you can feel complacent. You might even, I mean, Dave, how do you feel about the people who are outside the rope? <sighs> not as good as us, are they? Well, they're, clearly, they're, clearly they're not. <laughs> Thank you, perfect illustration. It can be easy to feel judgmental, it can be easy to feel complacent. That's one, so this is one way to make a group. You know, it has pros, it has cons. Okay, thanks guys, can you put the rope away now? Now, I have a second way that you can make a group, and this involves everyone. If you are able, don't worry, if, you're, if you'd rather sit down, if you have trouble standing, don't, don't worry, but if you're able to stand, can you please stand up? Thank you very much. Now, this is the complicated part, are you ready? Without making yourselves dizzy, I want you to turn around as many times as you like, and I want you to face in a random direction in the, in the hall. So just, just turn around a couple of times, just to, you know, just to free yourself up a little bit, and then just face something. You might want to look at Paul at the back here. Paul's a good-looking man. You might want to look at Stuart. Wave, Stuart. Baptised last week. You survived. Still here, still with us, that's good. You might want to look over at the speaker over there. Alan, wave to me. You might want to look at Alan. You might want to look at the... You might want to spin too much, you make yourself sick. You might want to look at the lovely uh, French doors there and look out there. So we're all looking in different directions, correct? Okay, brilliant. <laughs> we're all heading, we're all looking in different directions. And then somewhere comes... Here, Scott, you can help me with this. I want you to stand and put that cross high in the air. Would you believe it's a homemade cross? Did that all by myself. <laughs> nice and tall, nice and high. Now, this is what we call a centred group. There are some of you who are looking or heading towards this point, this centre of the group, which is the cross. There are some of us which are heading other ways. Amanda, you're going the other way, aren't you? Very dodgy. <laughs> now, you might be... Far away, look at Bridget. Bridget is right at the back here. She's quite a long way away, but she's looking, well, she was kind of, she's looking near to the cross. So even though you're far away, you're heading in the right direction. You're heading towards Jesus. On the other hand, Ian, dodgy character, he's really close. He's really close to the, to the cross, 
but he's actually looking in the wrong direction. Now, can we apply that to our lives? You might have been born and raised in a church setting, but if you're heading in the wrong direction, that's not doing you any good. That's something you need to be aware of and you need to turn around. Interesting, that word for turn around is repentance. You could be far away for all sorts of circumstances. It's, it's easy to be, I mean, because often, if when we talk about, the, talk about the boundary, talk about the group, often what makes the boundary in actual fact is our behaviour. You live a certain way, you have a certain sort of background, you haven't been married too many times, oops, you haven't had any of these sorts of issues. It's those sorts of things that tend to make the boundary. But when we're heading towards Jesus, the boundary isn't important. What's important is the direction of travel. Uh, we could be far away for all sorts of reasons. You could be far away, but you've caught a glimpse of the cross and you're heading towards the cross. Or you're right close up, but for whatever reason, you're heading in the wrong direction. I think this is a much better way to think about how we make a community of faith, how we make a church community. Because the emphasis, the question isn't, are you in or are you out? The question is, where are you heading? And you can join in that journey with anyone and you can, you can encourage one another on that journey. Two different ways to make a group. You, I wonder what you think is the best way forward. Anyway, you can turn around now. A big round of applause for Scott for holding that. His arm is exhausted. I'm going to hand over to Nick now. Please continue. Awesome. So we are going to be moving into a time of communion now so I don't know for all of you guys what experiences you've had of of church in the past maybe you've been to Church of England or Methodist or other Baptist churches or free evangelical churches they a lot of churches do communion differently don't they some some is where it's passed along in rows um, some is where the, there's also people certain people who can and can't take communion i know in other baptist churches uh, in in some baptist churches they have what they call closed communion and open communion so closed communion is where if you're a member of the church then you can have communion if you're not a member of the church you can't have communion. They save communion until the end of the service and then those who aren't members need to leave. Or it might be that actually for you to become a member of the church, you have to be baptised as well. So you have to be baptised, then you become a member of that church, then you can take communion at that church. And there's different reasons for these things, but at this church, we feel it is really important to have an open communion. That means that actually everyone is welcome no matter what actually it is down to you as a person if it feels right between you and God to come and take communion but actually we we do not want there to be any barriers to that and it's continuing with the theme of generosity of sharing that actually we see it as so important to share with others and we actually see it as really valuable to be able to gather around these tables and to share together as well rather than for us to stay in our seats and to have it pass around which there is nothing wrong with that other churches do that and that is completely completely acceptable completely fine but actually we do see it as really important here for us to be sharing together because on the night that Jesus was betrayed he sat with his disciples and he shared with them and he took the bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body broken for you. Eat this and remember me. In the same way, he also took the wine, or in this case, grape juice. And he said, drink this and remember me. And they shared in a meal together. It was all around this theme of sharing together. And we just see that as so important that actually everyone is welcome. Judas was sitting at the table with Jesus. Jesus knew that G Judas was going to betray him, and yet he was still welcome to take part in that communion. So for all of us here, you are welcome. God welcomes you to take part in this. So please do not feel unable to do this. If you want to take part in this, to be remembering what Jesus did and continues to do for us in him dying on the cross, forgiving us not once, but forgiving us every single day, every day that we mess up, that actually Jesus says, you are forgiven, you are made whole.
So we are going to come and share in this together. So please, when you feel able to, if you feel able to, please do come up um, and share in it together as well. So perhaps actually not for you to just come up and take your own uh, bit of bread and wine, but maybe to share that with uh, family members. If you feel a bit uncomfortable in terms of COVID-wise, that's completely fine. Please do take that for yourself. But if you're open to someone else handing you that, then please let's try and foster this theme of sharing this morning. When you come up to take the bread and the wine, maybe pass that to the person next to you, particularly if you're coming up as friends or as family. But we are going to be sharing in that together and celebrating the God who is always there, who always welcomes us, who always loves us. Please do come up when you're ready and there is gluten-free bread on that table over there. anyone needs communion bringing over them to them please do give us a wave and someone will bring that over to you
sorrow and love flow mingle down did there such love and sorrow me oh thorns come to be truly human, truly alive. You teach us what life is, life in all its overflowing abundance. Lord, may we have an abundant mindset, an extravagant mindset, a mindset that speaks of extravagant grace, that recognizes your abundant overflowing love throughout creation. Lord, while we live innocent as doves, but shrewd as serpents, Lord, let that shrewdness never be a, uh, a mask for fear, for anxiety, for a scarcity mindset. Instead, Lord, may we live in that abundant, full, flowing grace that you so fully give by you, Holy Spirit. Amen.